Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Moses the Pharma Coach. Today's video is about depression and antidepressants. I know that a lot of you are struggling right now with everything that's going on in the world, the injustice, the fear, the hate. Taking care of your mental health is so important right now. And I know that many of you need medications to help you cope. So I want to give you all the information you need so you can make the right decision for you or for somebody you love. If you know someone who's suffering from mental illness or is battling depression, please watch. This is for you. Depression remains a pretty taboo subject in society, but it affects more than 264 million people of all ages worldwide. It is a leading cause of disability given that it affects a person's ability to function and live a fulfilling life. Studies have shown that up to 85% of people in low to middle income communities don't seek out treatment for mental disorders. Given the variety of treatments available, I will share with you the factors that go into choosing the right treatment, the differences between those treatments, and what you need to know about them. And like I said, if you don't watch it for yourself, watch it for a family member, a friend, a colleague, well, somebody you love and care about. We're going to go over seven key factors pertaining to antidepressants. The first one, the symptoms and the conditions that are to be treated. After that, it's the side effects. Compatibility with medications. The cost, your history with antidepressants your preferences and expectations, and lastly, psychotherapy. Let's start with the symptoms and conditions that are to be treated. An antidepressant will be chosen according to a person's specific symptoms. If we take depression, for example, symptoms of depression can be categorized in two, two <laughs> categories. An increase of negative emotion, or a decrease of positive emotions. These emotions are regulated by neurotransmitters in your brain, such as serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. Yup, your stress and mood are run by these guys. Depressive symptoms are generated when there's a dysfunction in the levels of these neurotransmitters. Here are some examples of negative emotions. Guilt, disgust, loneliness, hostility, irritability. An increase of negative emotion is often related to a serotonin or norepinephrine dysfunction. Here are some examples of positive emotions that are decreased in depression. Loss of happiness, loss of pleasure, loss of energy, decreased concentration, and decreased self-confidence. A decrease of positive emotion is often related to a dopamine and norepinephrine dysfunction. But what is the link between antidepressants, neurotransmitters, and symptoms of depression? First, you have to note that there are different categories of antidepressants. The first category is called selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs. They boost serotonin, they're only selective for serotonin. Therefore, they help to reduce negative emotions. Here are some examples of SSRIs. Their names are pretty cool. Citalopram, escitalopram, paroxetine, fluoxetine, and sertraline. Another class that also boosts serotonin is called serotonin modulators. Among them, we have vartioxetine, which is one of the most recent antidepressants on the market, and we have trazodone. Another category is serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. They boost both serotonin and norepinephrine. They help to reduce negative emotions, but considering that they work on norepinephrine, they also help to increase positive emotions. Some examples are venlafaxine, duloxetine, and desvenlafaxine. There is another category called tricyclic antidepressants. They boost serotonin and norepinephrine, 
But, a big but, this category of antidepressants is less widely used in depression because of their many side effects that we're going to talk about later in this video. Here are some examples of tricyclics. Amitriptyline, nortriptyline, clomipramine. There are other types of antidepressants that are not part of these four categories, but they also help boosting levels of neurotransmitters. We call them atypical antidepressants. Among them, we have bupropion. It boosts norepinephrine and dopamine. It is primarily effective to help increase positive emotions. It's an energy booster. Another atypical antidepressant is mirtazapine. Furthermore, antidepressants can help against mental conditions other than depressions. For example, it helps to treat anxiety disorders, obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD, or post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Depending on the diagnosis made by your doctor, the choice of your antidepressant can differ from someone else's antidepressant. Some of these antidepressants can be effective in conditions other than mental disorders. For example, if on top of depressive symptoms, someone has insomnia, we'll choose an antidepressant that causes drowsiness, such as a tricyclic, mirtazapine, or trazodone. If someone is smoking, bupropion could be a good choice because it helps people to stop smoking. Speaking of bupropion, like I said, it's an energy booster. Therefore, it can help when someone with depression has excessive fatigue, decreased concentration, and even a reduced sex drive. And if someone has chronic pain, a SNRI such as duloxetine can help. The second element to consider when choosing an antidepressant is its side effects profile. Although some antidepressants are generally better tolerated than others, most antidepressants have specific side effects that might not be suitable for everybody. Even within a same class, some differences exist when it comes to side effects. Luckily, most side effects disappear with time. Antidepressants are usually started at a lower dose, sometimes not even at the therapeutic dose. This is done in order to decrease the intensity of possible side effects. The goal is to accustom the body to the medication before increasing it to a therapeutic dose. Let me give you some specific examples. SSRIs, the first class of antidepressant I told you about, that only work on serotonin. It is a first-line treatment in many mental disorders, such as depression, anxiety, PTSD, OCD. Why? Because they're generally well-tolerated. However, one possible side effect with SSRI is sexual dysfunction. By dysfunction, I mean a decrease in libido, ejaculation, erection, etc. Luckily, this side effect is manageable. For instance, adding bupropion to a SSRI can help rule out sexual dysfunction. Speaking of bupropion, like I said, it's an energy booster. Therefore, it can stimulate your body. That stimulation might not be suitable for somebody with agitation or with insomnia. Bupropion is also not suitable for somebody with epilepsy because in this situation, it can lower their seizure threshold. Earlier, I told you about tricyclic antidepressants. Like I said, they're less used in depressions because of their many possible side effects. Among their side effects, we have drowsiness, constipation, dry mouth, and even confusion in older patients. Compared to other antidepressants, tricyclics are more likely to cause weight gain. Other antidepressants that can often cause weight gain are paroxetine and mirtazapine. Compatibility with other medications. This rule doesn't only apply to antidepressants. It applies to all medications. Before you're given a new medication, this new medication has to be compatible with your other medications. There is one interesting interaction involving some SSRIs and dextromethorphan, also known as DM. 
This is a common ingredient that we find in cough syrups. For instance, fluoxetine, which is a SSRI, increases the level of DM in your body. And it's been reported that DM can also boost serotonin. Therefore, this interaction can lead to a very rare but very dangerous condition called serotonin syndrome or serotonin toxicity. It can manifest by tremors, spasms, excessive sweating, hyperthermia. It can even lead to death. To learn more about the mechanisms behind drug interactions in general, check out my blog article that I have in my description box below. As you know by now, there are many antidepressants available. And obviously, their prices vary. Some are only available in the brand name versions, which make them more expensive than the ones available in a generic version. I have a video that explains the difference between generic and brand name drugs. Check it out, it's in the description box below. Your history with antidepressants also has to be taken into consideration. It wouldn't be logical for you to receive again an antidepressant that wasn't effective for you in the past or to which you had serious side effects. Your preference also has to be considered. There might be some side effects that you might deem unacceptable. Another preference that you might have is an antidepressant that has to be taken not more than once a day. In terms of expectations, it's totally normal to have some, but we have to make sure that they're realistic. Let me give you an example. From my experience at the pharmacy, I've encountered many patients that think that they will start feeling better just a few days after starting their antidepressant. However, whether it's for depression or anxiety, an antidepressant can take up to four weeks to improve your symptoms. Some patients even think that as soon as their depression resolves, they can stop their antidepressant right away. But in order to prevent any relapse, it's recommended to continue your antidepressant for six to nine months. However, if someone has other risk factors such as other mental conditions, residual depressive symptoms, or a severe or recurrent episode of depression, their treatment should be extended to at least two years. Finally, psychotherapy, also known as talk therapy, can be highly beneficial in the management of depression. Studies have shown that the combination of psychotherapy and antidepressants is more effective than psychotherapy or antidepressants alone. Luckily, there are many types of psychotherapy available. If you want to learn more about them, click on the link in my description box below. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a video. And share this video with a friend. And don't forget to like this video and leave a comment to let me know what you want me to address in my next videos. I'll see you when I see you. Until then, you keep refilling your life.